Um, I got 12 in my, in my watch, so let's, let's, let's get going. Um, my name is Gabriel Rojas. Uh, I work in a financial company in New, York, in New York City. I'm a pretty much person that works in DevOps. Uh, a lot of cross stack, like Jeff was saying a couple of days ago. So it's a little bit of Windows, a little bit of Linux, any open source tools that we can use to manage environments, uh, Linux or Windows. And, um, and I'm going to go over the slides first a little bit, and uh, then we get to the demos, OK? Uh, as you guys can see, we're going to cover Kubernetes, Jenkins, and PowerShell. And my goal here is for everybody to understand what the tool can do for you, what the, you can do in your companies. But this is something that you guys take back to your companies and start doing a little more research on how you guys can use it. There's a million ways of uh, using all these kind of tools uh, on Windows or Linux, OK? So let's see. Let's go to the next slide. OK, done. Let's start going to the demos. Um, OK. Uh, close this, and then we're going to VS Code. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys, showing you for Docker. So the way uh, uh, I describe Docker to people is pretty much the way you want to run your application. This is the way I wanted to look at it. This is the way it needs to look. This is the way I wanted to deploy it. and. Uh, and everything is version control, and you can actually codify it. That's the beauty about it. And it has a lot more advantages in security, all that stuff that you guys can read about it online. There's a lot of information in there. Um, I will have two Docker files. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you uh, is using the Microsoft PowerShell uh, for the Docker Hub. Docker Hub, where a lot of people publish images, uh, is public. So everybody can download it. Do not put secrets in there, please. So be careful with that. Uh, but you can share. So Microsoft, everything, anybody, Jenkins, Ubuntu, uh, Red Hat, they put their images, not Red Hat. Uh, they put the images up there, and uh, you can download and play with them. Usually you get like a shell, blank shell, but you can do whatever you want to make it look the way you need to look in your enterprises. Similar when you create a VM, you install agents, and you install whatever you need to do. You have to do similar stuff to, to your container image. Uh, you, you have a label, pretty much the version. Uh, then the working directory, uh, start working there just to download, uh, uh, to install the model pester. And I do a couple of updates on the, on the image. You always update your image when you create them. Make sure you do that. Uh, I had to install uh, Java. The reason being, the way I'm going to show you guys is like Jenkins can connect to Windows, either uh, full GUI or, uh, or core, uh, via something called G protocol called JNLP. So it's a Java protocol. So that way you don't have to worry about uh, password or anything on the open. It knows how to connect to a secure. Um, I'm not saying better, but it's another option. You can do SSH also. But in this case, I, I choose that, and I have worked with that. It works pretty well. Um, I ha I'm copying from my local directory at uh, test.ps1. It's just a regular script, just to show you guys how it works. You just get command. Um, and then I, I, I use it called Jenkins. I make sure this parse uh, administrator uh, writes on the box. And uh, the key here is expose. Uh, on a post, you can actually tell the, it's, uh, what, what ports you want it to expose to the world. Usually, the, you could, would not be able to get in or anything like that. So it's posting SSH, 8,500 8,500 for Jenkins to communicate over and talk to the container. And, uh, then, uh, and then you can uh, comment it out, but you can actually, uh, actually tell it the default shell when the container starts, it can be Bash or PowerShell, whatever you want. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please raise your hand. Interrupt me anytime, okay? That's the, that's the file just for the, for the container itself. So now, this is the Docker file for the Jenkins life. So I'm going to, do, I'm going to run Jenkins in a container that's going to manage other containers or other hosts. And the reason the, being I'm doing this, um, it is because it's easier to manage. You can virtual control, 
uh, it's, it's easy to test with your machines. Um, so I sent in a couple of installations. So I installed PowerShell here because I wanted to show you how it works on, on, on the machine also. So you can install it uh, anywhere. I have problems doing um, just downloading from the um, I get. I had to download it manually because it's a Debian kind of they they do a lot of they do a lot of checks on it, so I had to do it manually. But in theory, you should be able to install it via AppGet or whatever you're doing for your image. Um, install Pester, a couple of plugins. This is important. So the power of Jenkins, something called plugins, and uh, Usually what people do, and I will show you guys, people are actually going to the, the console and just start clicking on them. But sometimes when they need to create a new Jenkins master, uh, they have to do all this thing manually. So make sure when you deploy in Jenkins, you, you deploy plugins and you make sure you use version. Uh, they upgrade all the time, so it's usually a good practice to prove what version you're using. So you need to replicate this, and at some point, you have it to replicate. Uh, these are plugins, a couple, of, there's a PowerShell plugin somewhere. Okay, it's right here. Um, so the PowerShell plugin is able to talk over, question? Uh, is there a reason you're doing separate run commands? Yes, just to explain to the people so people can, can see, but you can put it in one line. You can actually put uh, install plugins and commas. Um, the reason we're doing it this way, just it looks better on the screen okay. <laughs> for people to, to explain. That was the only reason. You can actually condensate. Um, as he was saying. Um, I installed the PowerShell plugin, I also installed the end unit plugin, and um, this is for Pester. Uh, there is a, when you do a Pester test with Jenkins and you get the results back, you don't, you don't use end unit, it will tell everything is okay, good to go, even though you may have failures on it. So end unit, what it does let you to do, is just start the XML file, and I will show you guys how this works. And uh, then it will tell you, okay, I got the XML, yes, I see an error, I failed the bill. Um, a couple of plugins that you need for, uh, for Jenkins and sent in updates and expose the ports. So this is the, this is the Docker Jenkins uh, file. Now let's go into a little bit um, of what we're doing for, um, for Kubernetes. Uh, what is Kubernetes? The way I can explain it better uh, for people is, let's say you know somebody has 10 kids. So your parent needs to make sure he knows, and you, only, you, you can only teach, you, you say your mom or your dad cannot be both. So, so they say your dad needs to know what is he doing. Did he do his homework? Did he shower? Did the other kids eat? Did you eat? Did he drop the kids off? So it's an orchestrator. So it makes sure everybody is on where it needs to be or where it needs to be at. So for example, if they're running a job, a website, and the website's running on that host and 90%, it knows how to move those containers to hosts that are not utilized as much. So you think about an orchestrator, um, and that's one of what I'm going to use Kubernetes here for. To run Kubernetes a little it's a lot of work to run the underlying infrastructure, so I would recommend if you guys are in the cloud, like using Azure, GCP, AWS, AWS not yet, it's coming up. Uh, they, they do manage Kubernetes, so they manage all the underlying infrastructure for you, and the only thing you need to worry about is deploying your jobs and your services, your applications. Uh, I will go that route, you guys can, uh, but you can install it on-premises. On There's a lot of stuff you need to take care of. It's a full-time job just been <laughs> up front with you guys. Um, but Azure, GCP, they, they do a great job. You don't need to worry about it. Um, I, I will go that route. And you can manage the stuff on prem from there. Keep that in mind. Um, OK, so let me, so what I'm going to run on my laptop is something, something called Minikube. You download it, install it, and uh, it's a small version to do development. So it does all the things that you need to do uh, for you. So what it does, what it really needs is uh, uh, you need to have installed, um, in this case, uh, have VirtualBox installed. When you create the box, uh, it creates something called Minikube, and that's kind of the controller for everything that goes on inside your uh, computer. 
All the other services are containers that they run, so I'm going to show you how many containers you need to run this. Uh, so I changed a lot of the presentation last night. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys how to make it work Windows 2019. It got released the, which version was? Um, one of the tracks that's released right now in the technical previews. So I'm going to use one in 2019 so to show you guys it's pretty much simple. Hopefully <laughs> it works. Um, okay, so let me guys show you now a little bit of a um, mini cube. Um, so, uh, and please stop me. Minikube has a dashboard, so you, let me make this bigger. And don't worry about taking notes too much. Um, if you go to my website, I'll uh, put it back in there. All the step-by-step -step instructions, how to do this, is there. So don't worry about like what did he do there, so you guys can actually look it up. Uh, dashboard. to spell. <laughs> of course. Uh, okay. So the only thing you guys need to have installed is Minikube and Docker. Even though you, you install Docker and then you just install Minikube and each, the instructions are on, online. It's not that difficult. Uh, what it does, you will see a lot of the options you have here. Pretty much you have jobs, you have pods, services. We're going to focus on deployments and services for this session. It's a lot of stuff. But uh, what we're going to do uh, for what we need to do, we're going to create a deployment file and a service file. The main difference is that deployment actually deploys what you wanted to deploy inside Kubernetes. And the service is the one that poses what you want to expose to the uh, open world. So means I just do a deployment, nobody will be able to get to this, but the service allowed me to expose something called a pod to the open, to the open world. Um, so it's a, the deployment file is pretty simple. You, you tell it a name, you tell it what is the app you want to deploy, what is the image you want to use. I'm using Docker Hub, and um, I created this image based on the Docker file that I showed you guys earlier. Uh, this is the port I need to expose um, for the application. Uh, the mal value mount, just to make sure I don't I have persistent storage. Like as you may know, Docker, when you kill a container, it's gone. So you may want to make sure you have the storage somewhere else you can, when you spin it back in, it knows what it needs to do. That's the deployment, and let me show you guys the service. Uh, service is pretty simple. This is one of my exposing. You pretty much support the HTTP port to connect to it, the GNLP port. Um, so when you do a deployment, um, so cubes, yeah, create. And I'm going to give it the file name that we have here, Jenkins deployment. Now, before I do that, let me show you guys all the stuff that actually. So each line that you guys see here, it's a different container, and each container is doing something for Kubernetes. This is all that it needs just on my laptop to run properly, to run Kubernetes. So just imagine running this in production uh, properly. So it's a bunch of uh, service discovery, DNS, um, can you, you can, uh, some stuff for DNS internally, uh, for externally, uh, for storage, for pods. That's kind of similar to like, uh, in the, in Asia, I forgot what they call it, but when you, you put everything in a resource, so you put all the resources inside, uh, I forgot what is the name, but you just kind of put everything together, this is my application, and this is all what I need from my application. So that's what happened with pods, uh, the dashboard, and a couple of atoms. <laughs> it's just funny. Um, so now let, let me just, now let me show you guys the deployment first. Um, so I'm going to do control, uh, create, and identify, we'll call it Jenkins deployment. And it's going to create my deployment. So, and this is pretty, like, pretty quick. So if I go back to my deployments here. <coughs> so it actually deploy the container. It tells you how, how, how long ago. 
Uh, the cool thing, the people usually have the problem with the containers, how do I get logs files? Kubernetes actually grabs all those for you <laughs> for free, pretty much. So all the logs files that you that they are exposed, you can get them here. That's that's a, that's pretty cool. Um, because usually you cannot get into a container, so you spin it out. There's a way to get into a container, but usually you will not. But you need to troubleshoot, some, troubleshoot something. This is a good way to do it. Uh, so we just did the deployment, and now we we look at Docker. So Docker PS is to show you all the um, all the containers running at the time. So you see my container running here. Um, and I can get into that container from here. So it's a do docker exec, uh, so the interactive, and my container name, and let's say I want to do it to bash. So that's my container right here. So it's a do uh, You see inside the, my Jenkins container are, are running uh, PowerShell right now, okay? So that's running inside Kubernetes. Now I'm going to expose the service. Uh, and let me get out of here. And to support the service, I just use the OR YAML file. You can be JSON, but I usually recommend people just YAML because you can actually, uh, with YAML, you can actually have comments on it. So it's good to comment your code. I'm not a fan of JSON, really, so, <laughs> uh, for that reason. Um, so now I create the service, okay? So if I, we go back to the dashboard, uh, we're going to services. So we see the Jenkins servers and we see all my internal endpoints that I have exposed right now. Um, you get a host IP that's only accessible when it Kubernetes. So you cannot get to, I cannot get to that IP at all from my laptop. So I had to use a pod endpoint to get into it. Um, so let me, let's get into the, so the way you can find that out. Uh, kubectl cluster info. Uh, no, I'm doing something wrong. Cluster IP right here. And the port, I need to get the information for the port because the port that they expose is, is random. And the reason being they expose you a random port instead of the one you gave is because the post can can move to different hosts if the host dies, and you don't want to you don't want to interfere with something that's running there. So you know it's just smart enough to so it's not using port 8080, and something else is using port 80, it will change the port to something that's not in use, so you don't get conflicts. That's another good thing about it. Um, so I'm going to get that information now. So cube, cube control, get services, service. So you guys see you guys see the mapping. So you see how it's mapping 8080 to 30846. Um, the 31,000 port right here, that port is the Gen GNLP port. And uh, you have to make sure that's not random for security reasons, because it can change on Jenkins. You can, I will show all this in a few. But that's one of the key things when you're working with this. Make sure the, the port is actually uh, always the same one uh, to communicate over. So I'm going to grab the port. Uh, let me, yes. And the IP that I have. See what happened. Then that one of four, thirty nine, and one eighty one. Of course. Yes, thank you. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> it's taking too long. Let's see what's going on. Uh, thirty eight four six. I see I have notes in here, just in case this is what's going to happen. Mm. 
I mean, I'm using, let me check real quick. Let me see what's going on. Uh, I'm most likely using the wrong IP. Sure, the content started properly. Hold on, let me see. I'm gonna do this. Just going to see if that does the correct. Uh, I think it's the correct IP. I just want to make sure uh, I can tell me to it. Okay, so that's not right. Um, and I just did this now, like five minutes, like 10 minutes ago, <laughs> first time. <laughs> like, really? Uh, I know why. I may be using the wrong IP. Just one second here. Yeah, it's IP address of the, the, the mini cube. It's because I use a mini cube and you have to use the IP address of the mini cube. So the first thing uh, when you get, this is the first time Jenkins started up, that you just need to install it. And uh, even if you run it from the container itself, you do dock and run at the container. Um, this is what you get. You need to get that administrator password. And the good thing about here is when I showed you guys before, is you go to deployment and go to logs. There is the secret. There's only one time, so don't worry about it it's on the screen. It will never work again. It doesn't do anything <laughs> crazy. Um, you copy and paste it there. Continue. Now, it will ask you to configure for the first time. Um, it will ask you to configure, put the admin stuff. Um, it's offline right now because of the internet, but if you need to install more plugins, you can do it from there. Uh, just going to do admin, admin. Admin, admin. Email address, save and finish. And it start using Jenkins. So, forget about Kubernetes. What we just see right now, that's what it takes to, to do this. It's just pretty much a minute to set this up. And now let's start creating jobs. Um, so, we the, and the way Jenkins works, and before we go there, before I forget, I just what I told you guys to forget about the security team, the port. Uh, you go to global security and uh, TCP port for the NLP. I'm just going to change it uh, for 31,000. And the reason I didn't use 50,000, uh, Kubernetes by default Minikube doesn't let you suppose ports above 30,000 something. So <laughs> I had to change it to 31,000. If there's a way to make it work with 50,000, but you have to make configuration changes. Um, I didn't want to worry about it uh, right now. So that's the first thing uh, you need to do. So the, the good thing here is that you can either run jobs on the master, uh, or you can have uh, workers. That it's better to run the jobs on the workers than the master. Because if the master is serving a lot of different jobs, it may get bogged down. So you usually have want to spin a different uh, containers to do your job or a different host to do your jobs. So now let's, we're going to configure one of the Windows um, the Windows host now. So the first thing we need to do is when you go to manage Jenkins, uh, then you go to manage nodes. Uh, you see your master. And then you do new nodes. I want to call it Windows 2019. Check permanent agent. Um, 
the description, the number of securities, how many jobs can it run at the same time. So you can do one, I don't know, 10, whatever. Uh, the remote the root directory, uh, it's pretty much tell you, um, is where it puts all the files that Jenkins creates. So it's all your logs, all that stuff, and it goes grab it from there. So you have, uh, you have like a security, uh, like secu a company that cares a lot of security and they send the logs to certain places, you can actually point them there. And, or you can get the logs to your, whatever you guys use for monitoring in your companies. Um, so in this case, I actually put it on, on the C Jenkins. I created a folder there. Uh, the label is important. Uh, this is how it knows when you create a job, you tell it, I want to run this job on this node. Because if you have something that's only Unix, Linux, and now, let's say you need to run Python and it's Python running on Linux, you may want to make sure you point it to the right place. Okay? So, Windows 2019. Just, I'll, I'll leave the defaults in here and I just save it. So we just created here. Now we have to make sure it communicates uh, over. You can actually, what I'm going to show you is the, the the GUI version, but you can see the command, and you can do it via command line, via DSC, when you configure your nodes or chef, whatever. If you know your parameters, you can do this via that way, so you don't need to uh, log into a box. Um, let me see if I can make this bigger. Okay, so I'm just going to open uh, the browser, and I'm going to go to that. Let me open it here first, and Chrome. Um, so let me go to that IP. And the port. So remember the port. Thirty eight four six. So to I'm going to copy. I just want to make sure it opens. Uh, what what I had done here beforehand, <laughs> to not do this in production or whatever. Uh, the firewall is disabled on 2019. Uh, the default firewall, USC, I think, uh, put in the minimum. Uh, install Java. Uh, so Java is actually installed. You can, by default, you can let it, do, let it be the default. I usually like to control it. So in this case, Java is installed on a C Java. And it's the installation you download from the internet from java.com. Do the offline installer. There is something here that you guys need to be aware of uh, when you guys are doing this. Uh, this when I started doing this, it took me like a whole day to figure out why it wasn't working. And I said, this will never work because it's Windows. <laughs> I was actually playing with Windows. It was actually my fault. Um, see all your downloads. So you guys see here. So that version is the 32-bit version of it. If you're trying to use PowerShell, it will not work with 64. It will give you a bunch of errors. So make sure you download the offline version 64-bit. So that way you can make sure PowerShell goes over 64 bit. That's what you're using by default. Um, if you need stuff with 32 bit, just use 32. But usually, I find better to use the 64 bit version for that. Um, make sure that that's a good uh, thing. And um, let me let me just get this copy and paste in here. And I go back to my notes. Let me my plugins. I'm sorry, not my plugins. Uh, manage notes. So you click on it. And I just did it. As you see here, uh, it will give you to install it from the browser, but you can create a service. Uh, if you want to do this via DSC or Chef or whatever, this is the command that you pretty much will need um, for that. And, um, and the only thing you will need to change depending on the, this will need to be parameterized based on the la label name that you have. Go ahead. No, you, that doesn't exist until you click the, you have to create the node first. Uh, on the nose, so I want to show you Jenkins. Uh, the good thing about Jenkins, you, what I show you is because step by step, uh, but there's something called a Jenkins file, and you can put everything in code, and you can version control that too. 
Um, so this is pretty much what you need. So what I'm going to do is launch in here. Um, it's going to launch Java. And I'm going to this up again. But this is a demo. And it was, we'll try to communicate over there. Try protocol. And hopefully this works. Yeah, connected right finally. This is a pain that I to get this part working. Um, so, connect, and the reason being is because of the port, what I told you guys about the port, I suppose. Um, after it gets this, you guys click on file. Um, you guys can see install as a service. So this is a good thing about it. But you can create a service, there's a command, a partial command line on 29, I think it's on 2016 too. Uh, create a service, and you can use that one, and just pass whatever you guys need. So this will create a service, and, um, and now if we look back to our, here's better, so if I do a refresh, this should be not red. In sync, is that in sync, sync? Okay, so you guys see right there, it's actually talking right now. So let's test this really quick. So to create a job, um, use a new item. Uh, you guys want to, so the freestyle project is pretty manual. Uh, the pipeline is what you want to learn. Pipeline is you need to know Groovy. It's not that much different from PowerShell. Um, but this is how it comes, like you have to become a cross stack engineer. Uh, I don't know Groovy, so I, I cannot copy and paste from the internet, it works for me. So I'm <laughs> just telling you what, like, it works for like, uh, just look for examples. Look for examples online, a lot of people have write stuff already. So you know a language, Google it, paste it and see what happened. That's the way I've been learning this stuff. Don't. Uh, oh yeah, that's true too. So you got examples of stuff. Um, I will show you guys that last, and uh, you guys see like uh, this is not that difficult. Maybe it's difficult for me. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to call it test for now. Um, there is the restrict where this project can run. So it, it will auto uh, it will auto complete. So in this case, we have 2019, and make sure you remove space. Actually, do that. So it sh it, that's the way it should look. It should look when it's actually talking fine. And uh, the good thing how let's say add a build step and uh, you want to use bash, there's Windows bash in there. <laughs> I never use it. But let's do something simple. We can command and uh, apply and save the job. So this will actually go over PowerShell over Java. <laughs> and if I build now, and hopefully this works. Um, if not, we figure it out. So you will see yeah, this thing was quick, actually. Wow. Um, you will get all the results there, like that. So now just imagine, and this is where, and just imagine, I just run a command over there. So imagine what you can do for this now. You can schedule stuff from Jenkins. You can, let's say you have Deacon jobs. You, you want something run Deacon every Friday. Dump it in here, schedule it. Uh, just, you can pass parameters on the, on the jobs. Uh, let's say you, you want to build servers. Hey, this is a good place to build. You don't have a centralized place to build servers. This is a good place to build servers. Uh, the first thing I ask, and this is the beauty about it, uh, so the, Jenkins is a credential store. Um, let me see if it's configured. Um, you see credentials here? So if I add, um, add credentials, you can add different type of credentials and you can add them here. So you can add USSH keys, all that stuff. It's obfuscated on the database. <laughs> it doesn't rotate, uh, but you can actually, you have something like, um, like uh, HashiCorp Vault, server, or whatever you keep your secret secrets on and you have API, it can go reach to API, encrypt it in here, and then you pass it down to your commands. So you can do it different ways. This is easy. You need like a simple authentication. Um, if you guys are going to use uh, OpenSSH, just put your keys in here. Um, just make sure you take the, take the measurements to rotate those keys and be, uh, it's obfuscated, so it's, on, it's, it's, it's encrypted at rest and encrypted in transit. 
So keep that in mind. Um, and that's pretty important for everybody here, because now, now on is everything. Our job security. <laughs> I think every company now security is the number, the number one priority. Um, they have a lot of plugins for Azure, AWS also. So you have some. Let me show you guys. This is the beauty about Jenkins. Um, uh, Jenkins. Plugins. Um, just type something like, uh, let's see what they have for PowerShell. I think it's only one. Uh, but they have, uh, I wonder if I can, platforms. They are, I, I don't know, over, I don't want to say over a, th over a thousand plugins, more than that. So something you're trying to do, MSPL and unit. Uh, Anything you think you're doing in your company and you're trying to you're trying to do it yourself, go look it up first here. Somebody had done it. That's that's the that's the beauty about this. That's the beauty about open source. Somebody has done the job done. I was the kind of person like it has to be me doing the job, and it will take me three weeks or four weeks to get it done. Uh, my boss doesn't even care about it. <laughs> like if I take before, but if I can tell you, I can get the same job done and just to me like five minutes to Google it, I think you become more efficient. So try to use what the community has written a lot. Send, send away PowerShell stuff. Uh, don't be the one, it has to be me. You will get the credit, don't worry about it. <laughs> you will get the credit in your company too, if you, because you found it or whatever. But it's a bunch of stuff that you can, you can do here. Um, so that's a good thing, keep that in mind also. Um, so let's see if we can get this working now on, uh, um, now let's try to run on, on PowerShell core, now that we know it runs on Windows PowerShell. I'm going to create a new job. Uh, how much time do we have? 10 minutes, okay. Uh, just going to do, I'm just going to call it PowerShell Windows core. Free start job. And so, uh, the other thing I'm not doing here because of the internet, uh, make sure you're using source control. You put all your stuff in Git. Uh, whatever you guys use GitHub and it integrates. So you're using GitHub, Bitbucket, I don't know what else up there. There's a plugin for it. And every time you do a, a, a merge into your branch, it, you can actually, the job will keep by itself and it will do all this build. So whenever you want to test your code using Pester or something like that, uh, do unit testing, it's a great place to do it. Because it will do it, will give you better results, and the beauty about it is like people will know who broke the pipeline. <laughs> so it's, there's a command called get blend, even though we're not supposed to. It's supposed to be open, and everybody's supposed to. Talk, there's a command called get blend, so you know who who broke it. <laughs> so uh, even though it's supposed to be open and no no blame and nothing, uh, it's a funny command. Uh, and then what we do here is a little bit different. Uh, Windows PowerShell will not work. Um, so you have to do bash, and what is my bash? That's a cute. Oh, this is what I had in. Oh, it's a cute shell. Um, the default shell is something, uh, it's, it's corn shell, it's not bash. So just, you have to make sure you do pound, uh, um, exclamation point, bin bash, whatever. So keep that in mind, I have a couple of our experiences with that. So you do polish command, and let's do, um, I think the syntax is like this. You know what, I have actually, I'm not going to screw it up, so let me. <laughs> uh, should let me copy it. Did I copy it? Oh yeah, I have it here, hold on. Let's do it something simple. I'm a grant for getting stuff, so actually, uh, I'm just going to copy this. And now we're going to do it here. It's going to do something similar we do over there. So, make sure, so that way you guys know I'm not pushing. <laughs> Get commands. Uh, I'm missing something. Nothing. What's that? <laughs> uh, I will tell you what's strange is wrong. So, what we. Uh, Yes, 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 yes. Oh, that's fine. It will do the default. 
we'll do a master. You can, I don't specify. I think you can specify. I have never done it. So let me run this first. If it doesn't work, we specify. <laughs> uh, run the job. It fell. OK, good. Let's see what happened. The system kind of, OK, so it's because it's running on Windows 2019. I read the logs. It's Java logs. I hated Java logs because it give you a bunch of shit, bunch of stuff. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I like you know I don't want to deal with it. But then you start looking at it. Usually you read the top. That's pretty much it that you need. You figure out your errors. Uh, so it's pretty much what I say. I have to specify where to run it from. Um, let's just, let me see if this works. If I do master, yeah, master will work. Okay, cool. Okay, just see green. And you see, uh, see what it got wrong. Also, you see what command you can obfuscate also, like the output. So you don't need to want to show something for whatever reason. Uh, you can you can do that. Um, the other thing, so funny. There's a funny fact about this. You see how it's blue instead of green. Uh, in Japan, so the person that created Jenkins uh, is from over there, and in Japan. Blue is actually go, <laughs> so you can change the color if people. You can change it to green, but usually start, red is bad, blue is go. Uh, different cultures, amazing. Um, okay, and you see here how we did um, with that tech, ten executor. So right now, if I, I had two here, if this job was busy doing something for half an hour, it will be able to run another one. But then the other jobs will stay there waiting. Um, so that's why you want to give yourself enough room, depending on what kind of machine you're running. Um, you're running the stuff. Um, containers. Let me oh, let me show you a pipeline, and hopefully it works really quick. Um, uh, pipeline, and you guys see how this is different. So you have to put try a sample script. There are a couple in there. I uh, have this one that I was using this morning. So I will explain really quick. Uh, you need pipeline on top. Um, you can read about it. Uh, but note is what, what node you want it to run. So instead of what we did manually, you tell it what node you want it to run out. Uh, stage, stage, just the name. So it could be unit testing. You want to test. First step, it could be a spin up container X, or maybe I want to check if my machine has X, Y, or C. So this is just names. You can call it whatever. And you will see. Uh, uh, then you are running invoke operational validation. I don't know if it's from 2019, so we're going to try and see if it works. And this should fail because I didn't put the file in there uh, on, the, on the Windows host. Uh, you just apply it. Make sure you use VS Code for because the syntax of the stuff. Uh, let's see. Have two minutes. It fell. Okay. Expecting Windows. Okay. Uh, let's see what happened. Have two yeah, minutes. Is that okay? <coughs> Back to project. Configure. Oh, yeah, she's right. You, you had a previous. <laughs> I will not have noticed that. <laughs> uh, let me build now, and hopefully, the job will pop up here. So, you see, this is one of my stages, I call it. So, you know, you're building, you're building servers, say, install X, install Y, join to the domain, do X, remove, or remove whatever. That test was supposed to fail, but yeah, whatever. Uh, but you see, so I did uh, operation validation, so you get all the stuff. Actually, it does work on, on, uh, on, on here, and, and then it should have see uh, one fail because the script didn't run, but whatever. That's it. You guys have any questions um, outside here? Let me know. Uh, try it. That's just download a container, spin it up. It's just two commands. It's a lot of information out there. And let me put back my information here. Uh, did I close PowerPoint? 
Anna file open recent presentation. Okay, that is my information, and uh, on my website you can see all the stuff step by step. Go ahead. Yeah, we have a bunch of different Jenkins and power, a bunch of different endpoints. You know the front end that we can use to run it all. A lot, a lot of our help desk people have problems and all kind of know where to go. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, um, there is. There's other tools you can put on top of it. Uh, there's a, or, I think there's a tool called release management that can actually go and talk to all these endpoints that you guys have. But Jenkins can talk to all these endpoints. Like, it depends what um, um, you help these guys need uh, and how, how good are they, they are. But um, you can do it from Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins can talk to everything, pretty much. Everything that's, you have, you have the protocols, OpenSSH, WinRM, eWorks with WinRM too. Uh, it's a little more with the credentials of the stuff, um, the NLP. So as long as you can communicate with an API or something, you can do whatever. Um, okay, thank you very much. <laughs>